I'm trying to dispose of this old poly tank which is degraded and leaked and had some fire damage and um, when you try and dispose of a tank that's about 400, 500 kilos you wonder what you should get stuck into it with and at first I tried an angle grinder which is bad juju, I'll show you why angle grinders produce a waste product like this which mats up on your hand or your glove and a lot of it goes in your eyes and you need to wear a face mask as well and um, smart people will know that the next thing it would occur to you to use to cut up a poly tank would be a chainsaw um, and then you probably the next question on your mind would be how do you control the huge amounts of output of a chainsaw because it's going to go all over your lawn it won't go in your lawn if, if you direct it all inside the tank so it's just a matter of getting the chainsaw to cut in the right direction so you can quickly get your tank cut up into chunks about this size uh, which you can presumably take to your local recycler this is a quick reminder of how a chainsaw works I've just switched over to helmet cam which I've just made so I have to use I'll show you helmet cam isn't it awesome? yeah everybody everybody now wants one yeah I'm so cool I didn't use helmet cam it turned out to be one of the worst inventions in the history of ever so I've gone over tripod cam so uh, a chainsaw, like if I was to, oops, bit this, um, if I was to force a chainsaw down that way, it would project um, junk all over me, as you well know. But if I if I'm to nose upwards like that, then the junk gets projected that way. And that's that's got to be your basic guiding principle the whole way you dispose of the tank. Here's a video of the basic speeds, noise and efficiency in action. The chain being used here is a not very sharp full chisel. It might make a difference. The semi chisel might be a bit different in action. In case you're wondering how I got the top of this tank off, I, um, I tied a, an ordinary 8mm poly rope around the top of it and jerked it off with the car tow bar. And I find these ropes are very good because they've got a lot of stretch in them, so you can, you can winch a tree and put a couple of metres of stretch on the rope so it's got that much pull on it. It's the same principle applies here when you're jerking the top off. You want the car to put a bit of tension on the rope and then go toing. A good thing to notice on these tanks is the difference between the inside colour and the outside colour. That's not totally illusory. It's not to do necessarily with stains. Um, you can see it on this one as well. That's how much a light tank will fade in the sun over uh, about 26 years. Um, I've seen people get black tanks, green tanks, slate tanks, and they all heat up too much and suffer enormous degradation on the top surface. 
and it's also a Legionnaire's disease risk if you get a dark coloured tank so I'd recommend against getting anything dark you want to keep your water as cool as possible I've just run out of fuel but uh, you can see the chips all the chips are building up on the inside I've got to remember to burn this bit of lawn there's still quite a bit falls on the outside maybe two or three percent of it this is the new blood these are the new tanks just waiting around on the side these two hope no wind turns up though So depending on how much mess you want to make, it's a non-trivial job. No, I haven't even cut up the base because I'm using that. Put a log underneath these ones. As it is, I'm going to have to um, put leaves all over this area and scorch it because there's still a bit too much plastic junk there. One hint I can give you to speed things up is don't do a documentary of yourself doing it. Maybe there's a documentary of the documentary, the making of the documentary. It's too late now. I'm going to have to buy another tank. <laughs> 